So, uh, since many of you asked me about references, I, I wrote something here. As a matter of fact, you don't need any of this for the exam. So, uh, as I, I will give you some notes, uh, but okay. In any case, okay, you find some, uh, uh, something we cover on the first lecture, so density matrix and whatever, in these two books, for example, that I partially followed, so Sakurai or Messia. And uh, uh, about the, the, harmonic, the chain of harmonic oscillators or identical particle bosons or fermions, well, you, you can find some discussion in Messia, for example, general discussion on this, uh, uh, this formalism of second quantization, I think, is in this chapter as well. Uh, but you don't find the details of the calculation, yeah? So don't, don't hope uh, to find something, because there is not. And about, uh, okay, the, the remaining lectures, there are some notes, and maybe I could give you some uh, other references, maybe to do some reviews, but uh, so far I'm, I prefer to, to do it later, okay? Uh, okay, so, yes? No, well, just, okay, H is just, depends on two variables. And uh, I just wrote in this in this way because I I would like to stress the symmetries of the Hamiltonian, and we will call it H uh, without J. No, because it's equal to it's so the dag of this operator is equal to itself. So otherwise, yes, the uh, yeah. <coughs> okay. So indeed, uh, okay, we were we were talking about the quantum easy model. No? So this is the Hamiltonian of the model. And uh, yesterday, in the, I told you that uh, a, so we, we consider the case h larger than zero, no? And uh, j larger than zero. Now, uh, actually, I would like to point uh, to point out that this is completely general. So this restriction is just a matter of uh, convention. Indeed, you can always map. You can find the unitary transformation that changes that change the sign of J and H. So we can uh, just fix the sign if you are interested in the spectrum and uh, study this particular re, uh, region. Okay? And in particular, okay, you you see well, we 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 saw this yesterday that uh, the Hamiltonian commutes with this operator, which is the spin flip operator. Okay? And the symmetry indeed is broken when h is sufficiently small, you have seen. But there are also other symmetries, so if you consider instead of spin flip in this direction z, you consider spin flip uh, with a x, then you see that you can change the sign of the magnetic field in this way. And there is also another transformation which consists of, uh, consider the product of sigma x, sigma y, sigma x, sigma y, and so on, and this changes the sign of j. Yeah. So, so this means that we can focus on just on this particular case. Okay. Uh, all sigma x. All yeah. sigma x. Uh, no, x, y, x, y, x, y, okay. alternating uh, x people. Okay, so uh, yesterday we introduced the Jordan the, no, transformation. C tag L equal product j is smaller than L, sigma j z, sigma L plus. So you have CL, which is j is smaller than L, sigma j z, sigma L minus. Okay. We also introduce other operators, Majorna fermions, the finest A to L minus 1, which is equal to C that L plus CL. And we introduce A to L which is equal to I, C, L, minus C, dag L. This operator satisfies the anti-commutation anti relations, C, dag L, C, N, is equal to delta L, N, C, dag L, C, dag N, is equal to C, L, C, N, which is equal to zero. Then we have here instead of the anti computer between A, AJ, and AK 
is equal to twice delta jk. Okay. And this is a Jordan Jordan Pinger transformation, and these are generally called Jordan Pinger fermions. Yeah. Jordan Pinger. Now, if you use this transformation, or the, we will discuss also the inverse. What happens to the Hamiltonian? Okay, I I wrote the uh, uh, the result of the mapping, but just consider one term just to see how it works because uh, yesterday we didn't do it. But maybe maybe we should. Have. So let's assume that we consider the term sigma z of the Hamiltonian. This is the trivial, the simple one. So sigma z. We have seen that it is simply given by i times a to l, a to l minus 1. We have seen that, no? Because okay, when you write a in terms of the Pauli matrices, then this corresponds, this has a sigma x, and this has a sigma y. And so if you use the sigma that i Sigma y, sigma x is equal to sigma z. Okay, you realize that you find this expression. Okay. So let's write actually the mass transformation here. Yeah? Yeah. Transformation is a sigma, uh, so a in terms of the Pauli matrices, a to l minus 1 is equal to j is more than l of sigma j z times sigma l x. A to L equal to uh, J is more than sigma J Z sigma L Y. So if you multiply the two, you have just the multiplication of sigma X and sigma Y. So this is for sigma Z. So we already know a part of the of the Hamiltonian. Hmm? What about this other part? Now, if we consider sigma L X sigma L plus one X, we want to write in terms of the this fermions. So we have this sigma x, we have a string of sigma z up to l minus 1. So we have a string of sigma z up to l minus 1 times the operator a to l minus 1. And this is the first, the first operator, sigma x. Then we have a sigma l plus 1 x, which is a string of sigma z up to l. a to l plus 1 minus 1. Hmm? Now, this sigma z is written in terms of the of the Majorana fermions in 2l and 2l minus 1. So this means that this, OK, no, as you can see. Uh, let me see. OK, this clearly commute with this operator, this product. The reason is that we have a sigma z up to l minus 1. But this is written in terms of operator is in n, l, and l plus 1. So they commute. So you can put this string on the, on the right. And then you find that it's equal to a to l minus 1. Then you, when you consider the product of this times this, only one sigma z remains. And the sigma z is a sigma sigma lz, then you have this, a2, l minus 1, minus 1. OK, let's write one. What is this? This is 2l, 2l uh, plus 1. Now we rewrite sigma z in terms of the major fermions here. OK, you don't need this, no? You already wrote this up. Hmm? You need the mind legend notes. And in some 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 that Yeah, there was a notes in capital letter. <laughs> Okay, so uh, this is equal to, 
let's continue here. Is equal to a to l minus one i a to l a to l minus one. Then here you have a to l plus one. What is this? What is this minus one? Ah, twelve minus one is equal. Is the subscript of it? And this is an I. So we have this expression. Hmm? Now we know that the Majorana fermions anti-commute at different sides. So we have minus sign. Let's put the I here. Then you have A twelve minus one squared. A twelve, A twelve plus one. But what is this? This is equal to one because of the anti-commutation relation. So when you square the Majorana family, you find 1. So this is equal to minus i, a to l, a to l plus 1. OK? Is it no or yes? No. OK, yeah. <laughs> but there is a subtlety, you know? Because I, when you consider here the sum, you have also a case when you have uh, L equal capital N. So what happens when L equal capital N? We impose periodic boundary condition. So this means that sigma capital N plus 1 is equivalent to sigma 1. But we have to treat these cases separately from this. Because we, uh, we have to see what, uh, where this operator is mapped. This is sigma N, sigma, sigma N plus 1. So we know that for this simple operator, for L smaller than capital N, we find this expression. Let's write just the result. We find that expression minus I A to L, A to L plus 1. Hmm? Now the question is, what happens when you consider the, the term sigma N X, sigma 1 X? which is part of the Hamiltonian. Let's do the same. So sigma capital N, capital N X, is equal to the product of the string, the string of sigma Z up to N minus 1. Sigma, this is a J. Sigma J Z. And here, here, sigma, uh, sorry, you have A to N minus 1. Then we have sigma 1, which is simply given by A1. So this is what we have. Now here we define an operator phi z. No? Yes? Is it, is it happen? I, OK. So uh, now we define this operator phi z. So let's use this operator. Okay. This is a product up to, oh, up to to n, uh, n minus 1, OK? So if we multiply on the left by that operator twice, we find that this is equal to pi z times sigma capital N z times e a to n minus 1 a1. Mm? OK? Because when you can say pi z times sigma z, you remove one sigma z, the last one, so you find exactly this expression. So you have this expression. Now we, let's write sigma z in terms of the, of the Majorana fermions. So this is equal to pi z. And then we have i a to n a to n minus 1, then you have a to n minus 1, a1. a to n minus 1 times a to n minus 1 is equal to 1, as before, because of the algebra. And so we end up with i by z, a to n, a1. So what's the difference between this term and this term? 
is in this part, no? Okay, in this pi z. Now, pi z is uh, commutes with the Hamiltonian. So what does it mean when you find an operator that commutes with the Hamiltonian? It depends, yes, and it, uh, it means that uh, you, you can find the basis of the, of the Hamiltonian, uh, which is also, which consists of eigenstates of the operator, pi z. And on, on this basis, the, this operator acts like a number, and the number is just the eigenvalue. The eigenvalues of pi z are either 1 or minus 1, because it is a product of uh, sigma z matrices. So this means that uh, depending on which eigenstates we are considering, here we can have a sign plus 1 or a sign minus 1. And this is exactly why when we wrote the, the Hamiltonian yesterday, we have these two signs, plus 1 or minus 1, which depends indeed on the, on the eigenvalue of this operator. Indeed, if you check the expression I wrote yesterday, I wrote something like that. 1 plus pi z over 2 times something plus 1 minus pi z over 2 times something. What's the meaning of this? This is a projector on the eigenstates with eigenvalue equal to 1 for this operator. Indeed, when, the, this operator, when you can replace this operator by minus 1, you find 0. So this term doesn't contribute. And, uh, uh, and the same for the other term with minus 1. So I said, OK, if well, this means, uh, in, in words, this means if pi z is equal 1, then the Hamiltonian is equivalent to this one. If instead pi z is equal to, one, uh, to minus 1, then the equivalency with the other Hamiltonian. Yeah. So let's try it again. So we, have, we start from the Hamiltonian basic model. Then we, have, we are looking for the eigenstates of this Hamiltonian. We know that we can, uh, this operator commute with the Hamiltonian, so we, we choose a quantum number, which is the eigenvalue of this operator. So we define, uh, I don't know, uh, something like this. So we, we write the, the, uh, the eigenstates in this form, where you have this quantum number associated with pi z, and then there, there can be other quantum numbers that now we don't know. And when you apply pi z to this eigenstates, you find plus minus the same. Okay. And now, depending on which eigenstates you, you consider, what you find is that this h applied to plus minus is equivalent, is equal to h plus minus, hmm? where these are the matrices that we wrote yesterday, which are given by h plus minus is equal to the sum, I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, this is not graphic H, but now I'm writing. So this is 1 over 4, sum over L and N up to, to N of A, L, calligraphic L, N, A, N. So this is the meaning of the expression that I, that I gave you yesterday. I wrote the Hamiltonian this way. So this means that I can find a basis hmm, of eigenstates in which I, I can uh, 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 I can choose a quantum number the eigenstate the eigenvalue of pi z. Hmm. So this uh, this operator has eigenvalues plus or minus one. So the states have these properties. And now depending on the sector where I, where I'm working, so depending on the, this eigenvalue, this Hamiltonian is equivalent. It acts identical like this with a plus sign or minus sign. To explain what I, uh, the, the expression of yesterday. Okay? And, uh, uh, and okay, I, I defined this matrix yesterday, and now you, you can actually rewrite everything because we, we computed all the elements, all the block, all the, uh, all the elementary constituent of this, of this Hamiltonian. So you can reconstruct the matrix, this matrix is H plus minus, if you want. And you realize that they have the form that I, that they gave you yesterday. <laughs> OK. Fine. So now that we hopefully understand the, the Hamiltonian, the, the, uh, what, what I wrote yesterday, so uh, this is, uh, you, you have this, and I remember it, so we don't need it. We don't need this. We don't need this. Now we don't need this. No. 
So let's uh, see what is going on in board. So write H. Okay, now this is equivalent to H. H uh, is equal so, so to 1 plus pi z over 2. H plus plus 1 minus pi z over 2. H minus where h plus minus equal uh, sum over ln from 1 to 2 capital N of a l that is a 1 over 4 h ln calligraphic h ln a l plus minus And uh, okay, the matrix. Now uh, you have the matrix, and I suggest you to rewrite it in a different way, which is the, this. You can write h plus minus. If now you you express the indices in this form, twelve minus one plus j to n minus one plus j prime is equal to one over capital N sum over sum a set of uh, of numbers that we will see in a moment, okay. plus minus of e to the i l minus n k plus minus, and then you can write this. This is a two by two matrix k plus minus j j prime, and then you have that the j j prime goes from 0 to 1, can be can be either 0 or 1, and then you have L that can be uh, equal to, uh, oh sorry, uh, let's do 1 and 2, 1 and 2, and then uh, which is equal to uh, from uh, what's the same anyway, 0 to, to, to and minus one. Okay, now this seems maybe a bit uh, strange what I'm writing here, but uh, I'm just uh, uh, I want to exploit the symmetry of the of the matrix of yesterday. Okay, and you remember that uh, uh, it was a periodic <coughs> there was the symmetry of periodicity, translational invariance, if you want, on the on the row of the matrix, or anti it was either cir cir uh, block circulant or anti circulant block anti circulant matrix. Yeah, I just called H. Okay, well, I can, uh, let's let's write. Let's use a different uh, different uh, uh, because otherwise uh, you can come. Uh, com uh, let's use uh, no, uh, um, E. Okay, what is E? Ah, uh, but I forgot to write it. E of K is equal to. Okay, is equal to a, now. Let's write just the, the matrix. Zero. I H minus I E to the I minus I K minus I. Okay, there is a type here. Minus I H plus E I E to the I K zero. So I would like to express the, the matrix of yesterday in this form. Why I can do that? OK, first of all, in the case of a block circulant matrix, then you can imagine, because of the symmetry, uh, this kind of translation invariance, that you can express it in a simple way in the Fourier transform. 
so what is the condition uh, to, to have this kind of symmetry of a circular metric? The condition is that when you, when you, um, when you sum capital N to an index of the matrix, you obtain the same element. Should be invariant under this transformation. So you have that in the case of uh, K plus, so in the case plus, you, you should have that uh, when you consider this expression and you, you shift one index by capital N, then you, you should find the same expression. There should be an invariance of this form. From L, L that goes to L plus capital N. Now, if, we, if you do this kind of transformation here, you find that this is this becomes equal to this this space becomes equal to e to the i capital n k plus okay times the same so in order to satisfy this condition so in order to be periodic then you you need to that this expression should be equal to one e to the i n k plus so this means that in a, we have that uh, the condition becomes this equal to one in one case and in the other case, you have now the condition that when you sum capital N to the index, instead of having a plus sign, you must have minus the same expression, because it was anti-block circular matrix. So the other condition becomes E to the I N K minus. This should be equal now to minus 1. So this means that you can always rewrite the matrix in this form if you choose this particular coefficient k, satisfying this condition. In practice, what does it mean? That, OK, how can you satisfy this condition? e to the n k plus equal to 1. This is satisfied by k plus equal to pi j over capital N, where j goes, from, for example, from 0 to n minus 1, capital N minus 1. If you substitute, if you plug this into this, and you realize that you, and you find all the possible solutions. These why are the square root of. Why do you want this condition? Because okay, I, I wrote the matrix yesterday, and the, you can compute it. And this matrix has the, the property that when you move along the, for example, along the first row, you have all different elements, and then, but then you, when you go back to the second row. Again, you find that it has this kind of circular structure, like it's, it's periodic. So the idea, is, the idea is to solve this kind of problem like you would do for a periodic function. So you go into Fourier, in Fourier transform, in a Fourier series. Now, if you have the circular structure, it, it corresponds to periodic function, so you know that the, the solution actually are e to the i to pi j over capital N, which is what we are obtaining here. And the condition is that uh, the, the phase associated with the, with the number of sides should be equal to 1. But then we have also another case when the, the, the matrix is anti-periodic. So it takes a minus sign. So instead of this condition, which is the standard one, we have to impose the other condition. e to the i and i minus equal minus 1. Which are the solution of this? <laughs> You have simply to shift, instead of considering integers, now you have to consider half integers. Why is this a case? Because when you multiply by n, you have that uh, you find a 2 pi j, which is irrelevant because it's in a phase, and then you have a 2 pi times 1 half, which is equal pi, and e to the i pi is equal to minus 1, which is our condition. So in other words, both matrices that, I, that we obtained yesterday can be written in the same, exactly in the same form. And the only difference is in these numbers, that they are quantized in different ways. So different, different quantization conditions. So what we are seeing is that if, you, if we restrict it to the sector when pi z is equal to 1, the, we, we will see that these are called the momenta, are quantized according to this case. 
if instead we consider a sector where pi z is equal to minus 1, the momenta quantize in this way. So we are splitting the, the, uh, the, the eigenfunctions in two different sectors, and depending on which we consider, we have to apply one or the other. Okay? This is the complication of the easy model with respect to, for example, the harmonic chain. Because now we have, instead of just one sector, we have two sectors to consider, which are different. Okay, okay so, uh, so in the end, uh, just to give you a, a, a picture of this, let's assume that we plot the eigenvalue of the, in some case, for example, h larger than 1, and let's plot the eigenvalue of the matrix a. H, okay? This, this spectrum of, of the Hamiltonian. The spectrum of the Hamiltonian will be something like uh, this, so you have the ground state, then you will have other states, okay? Now, because we know that depending on the eigenvalue of pi z, we can be in one or the other sector, so this means that in one case, these eigenvalues will be the same of the eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian H plus, but it can be also the eigenvalues of the other Hamiltonian, H minus. So you will have some, a subset, a subset of the eigen, eigenvectors which will be the same as for the Hamiltonian H plus, and the other and the rest will be the same for the Hamiltonian H minus. So this is Hamiltonian H minus, for example. No, as a matter of fact, this is H plus. And this is H minus. And this is the energies of H. This is the meaning of the equivalence. Hmm. Okay. Is it clear? Okay, uh, sorry. Uh, you, this is all, um, you can have this uh, because I, I, I draw some particular, I, I choose the color in a particular way. But it's just a matter of that. It can be any, any value of H, and you, you can always select. Uh, you, you, for each eigenstate, you can determine whether it comes from one sector or the other. Because the important thing here is that there are uh, that there are two possible sectors, and you can identify which one it is. And in each sector, the Hamiltonian can be written in the in the simple form that we wrote here, just a quadratic form of fermions, like in the harmonic chain. Okay, so. Uh, to understand this, I can raise something. <coughs> so, uh, like in the harmonic oscillator, we would like to solve the problem. Commutator to H and H plus minus, say, and a linear combination of the Majorana fermions and some linear combination, which we will call the V dag K. is equal to epsilon k beta k. So we want to, because the h plus minus are quadratic, and they satisfy simple commutation relations, we can expect that if we compute the commutator between this quadratic operator and something which is linear in the minor fermion, we will find something which is linear, like in the harmonic oscillator in the minor fermions. So the idea is to choose just an answer for beta k. So I, I only know that it will be a linear combination of the of all the fermions, let's call this B K L A L, okay. and then uh, and then I try to find a solution or some solution to this equation. Why? Because let's assume that I, as before, that I find I found the, the solution for this equation. That this means that the given an an eigenstate of the Hamiltonian again. We know that when I when I uh, when I apply V dag, 
k to this eigenstate. So let's assume that you have, uh, okay, let's put this uh, plus minus here and somewhere plus minus. A h plus minus, so the, the quadratic Hamiltonian. So if we are able to find this operator, then we know that when apply, we apply h, if h plus applied to psi e is equal e psi e, so it's an eigenstate, then we know that when we apply h plus to b dark k psi e, what we find using the commutation, this commutation relation, that this is equal to e plus uh, epsilon k of psi of b dark k psi e. So like in the harmonic oscillator, what we have is that for each eigenstate of the Hamiltonian, we can construct another eigenstate by applying this operator, and it will have this kind of this energy. Okay? Uh, and so uh, this means that also we, 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 we can define the, 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 the ground state of this Hamiltonian H plus as the vacuum of the operator BK, the adjoint of B. Because we also know that if this holds, it also means that the h plus minus, okay, this depends on plus minus, so you should choose different where I put plus minus. Okay, no, no, no I, I can do that. Okay, yes, I'm sorry. Because minus epsilon k b k. Okay. So, So the ground state is uh, defined as the state such that the BK applied to psi ground state will be equal to zero, exactly as in the in the harmonic chain. So well, we have a different. Oh, okay, this holds for H plus, okay, and H minus. Now you could say, well, but we are interested in the Hamiltonian of the Easy model. So we have actually uh, to see which are the eigenstates of h plus minus, which are also eigenstates of h, because there are these two sectors. So depending on the eigenvalue of the uh, of pi z, we can be in one or in the other sector. Okay? So what I mean, let's assume, let's assume for a moment that uh, let's consider the ground state of the Ising Hamiltonian. Let's call this uh, psi Ising ground state. Let's consider the state, and let's assume that this state is an eigenstate of h minus, okay? Because we have the possibility either is h minus or h plus. We don't know now, but let's assume that it's h minus. Yes, but okay. Yes, they are. If you want to keep in mind that here there is a dependence on plus or minus. This is not needed, as a matter of fact, because as we saw here, they have different quantization conditions, so the k are different for the two. This is why I can actually write in this way for both cases. Only the k's are different. So if you want, you can also put this uh, label plus minus, but it's not really. Just keep in mind that uh, uh, you, you will find different, different results. So, yeah. This is what will happen, yes. Exactly. So let's assume so that this psi ground state in the notation of before is just given by minus, and then we have some other quantum numbers. So this means that uh, when you apply h minus to psi ground state, we find e ground state, psi i ground state. So far we are not. Just say, let's assume that we are in this uh, in this situation. If you're in the, oh, you 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 could also consider the other case. Eh? Yeah, no problem. So let's assume that we are in this situation. So we uh, the ground state is in this sector. Now let's consider the first excited state of this Hamiltonian. So the first excited state uh, we know that the first excited state of H minus is just B dag. You have to apply B to the to the Hamiltonian to the to the state. So we could guess that the excited state would be something B dag k with some particular k applied to psi ising ground state. This is an eigenstate of H minus. 
we know that when we apply H minus to this, we find P e ground state plus epsilon k psi, uh, beta k psi ground state. This we know for sure. Okay? The problem is that, okay, is this an eigenstate of H or not? This is the question. And in order to see whether it's an eigenstate, we have to apply phi z. Because we have to check whether we are in the same sector as before. If you apply phi z to the state, what do you find? By definition here, phi z applied to the state is equal to minus itself. OK? We were in this sector. Now if you apply phi z to this state, Yes. So we are. Oh, let's write everything clear. So, assumption. Phi z applied to the ground state is equal to minus psi ground state. We assume this. Then I, so this means that psi ground state, that means that the h minus of psi ground state is equal to e ground state psi ground state. This imply. Now we consider the state B dag K psi ground state. And let's check what is the eigenvalue, what is pi z applied to the state. Okay? Pi z is the product of uh, sigma z, and we have that the B, BK is a linear combination of A of Majorana fermions. So pi z. By z was defined as the product of 1 to n of sigma z. And if you write it in terms of the Majorana fermions, this is equal to, to ma, minus i to the n product over all the Majorana fermions that you have. This is an n. This is pi z. Now, when you consider pi z, the commutator between pi z and a generic Majorana fermions you can easily check that this anti-commute with the with the Majorana fermions. Why is the case? Because we know that all the Majorana fermions commute with the different Majorana fermions. Uh, sorry, anti-commute. Uh, sorry. Uh, it's a, I thought, Mm. Okay. I said it should be equal to minus. This is anti-commutation minus. Okay. So it should be equal to this because okay, uh, let's multiply this expression by pi z to the to the right, for example. We have pi z aj pi z should be equal to this expression here. Okay, now let's uh, Will be written like product L goes from 1 to 2n of AL AJ times the product from L goes from 2n to 1 of AL. You can rewrite this, this product in this way, reordering the operators if you want. Okay, well, this is just detail, but just to tell you that if you if you do this, then you start moving the Majorana fermions and realize that you, you pick a just the minus a minus sign. Okay, yeah. Thanks. Okay. 
So what I'm claiming here is that when you write pi z applied to b dag, what you find is that minus b dag k pi z times angle of state. This was equal to minus 1, so we find B dot K psi ground state. So, in other words, I'm saying that when you consider the single, a single excitation, when you, uh, when you add the fermion to the ground state of the model, you change sector. So instead of being in the same sector, you go in the other sector. And so this means that, that this is not really an excitation of the easy model. So this is an excitation of the Hamiltonian H minus, but doesn't belong to the to the spectrum of uh, H. Yes. Yes. Okay. We uh, we have seen that the spectrum is divided in two sectors. Then we uh, in each sector the Hamiltonian is equivalent either to one Hamiltonian H minus or H plus. Now let's assume that we, the ground state is one of the two sectors, in particular the sector with uh, pi z equal minus 1. Now, okay, we, um, we can consider the excitation of h minus, for example, because we know that some excitation of h minus will be excitation of the easy model. And, okay, the, the, the simplest excitation that we have is just a single particle excitation. You put a fermion. You add a fermion there. And so the question is, okay, is this an excitation of the easy model? You try. In order to be an excitation of the easy model, it should have it should be in the correct sector, which is the sector minus one. Then the idea is check, we should check it. So we assume that the ground state is in this sector. And now I apply pi z to the to the new eigenstate and I see whether I find minus one. Unfortunately I don't find minus one, I find plus one. So this means that the excitation is in the wrong sector. So while this is an excitation of H minus is not an excitation of H. How can I obtain an excitation of H? I simply can apply two. I can put two fermions instead of just one. Because if I put two fermions, because this operator anti commute with each fermion, then I remain in the same sector. So this means that among all the excited states of H minus, only the excited states with, a, with an even number of fermions are also excited states of the easy model. Only a part of the spectrum of uh, H minus is also a spectrum of H. Okay. And the same for H plus, which gives the, the remaining eigenvectors, yes? Okay. Well, just to the calculation, if you want. Uh, it's, uh, Uh, let, let me think a simple way to see. Uh, yeah, there is a simple way. Okay, uh, we know that pi z is equal product from L goes to 1 to, L goes to, 1 to 2 n or to sigma Lz. Let's write in this way. Now we, we consider pi z hmm, multiplied by a, a major affirmance A. The major affirmance A, as you have in your notes, is equal to the string, the string of sigma z times something which can be sigma x or sigma y, right? It's written this way, depends on which operator it is. So we have here that the operator A, so I want to compute something like this, with some L. And what I'm saying, I'm writing this in terms of spins. And in terms of spins, it will be, okay, let's write, for example, A to L minus 1. This will be uh, 12 plus 1. So this will be given by the product from j from 1 to l of sigma jz times sigma x, for example, in this case, l. And then here, pi z here. OK? Now, the string of pi z commutes with sigma z. Sigma z commutes with themselves at every position. So you can move this here. By z, so this is equal to is equal to product that j equals to one uh, uh, from one to l of sigma j z, and then you have here to compute pi z sigma l x or y whatever you have one of the two pi z. The only term here 
that doesn't commute with sigma x is the one corresponding to the side L. Okay? So in the end, you have a, on one side, you have one sigma z. In the middle, you have a sigma x or y. And on, and on the right, you have sigma z. So here, you will end up with, with okay, you, I hope you can see here, with sigma z, L, sigma L, x or y, sigma L, z. These two polymeric is anti-commute, so you find the minus one. No, doesn't work. <laughs> uh, okay. You find this, and this is exactly equal to minus sigma L x y. This is related to the algebra of the polymerases. Yeah. It's just a check you can do. Yeah. It's not a problem. It's just the 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 I guess the the, the first excitation, the, the single particle excitation of H minus, okay, is not an excitation of the easy model, because if it were an excitation, then the the eigenvalue of pi z would have been equal to minus 1. This is the problem? OK. <clears throat> we have said that h, h plus minus something e equal e, some energy, plus minus, and something. OK? We have this. The, we have uh, identified the ground state. We assume that the ground state corresponds to the sector minus one. Hmm? Now we say, okay, uh, I want to, uh, I want to consider the, the, uh, I want to focus on the sector with with pi z equal minus one. I just choose that particular sector. I know that in the particular sector the Hamilton is completely equivalent of h minus in that sector. Hmm? Okay, so now I can compute the spectrum of H minus, all the eigenfunctions and eigenvalues. But now I must be careful because this equivalence holds only if pi z applied to the eigenstate is equal to minus that eigenstate. Because I'm assuming that I'm in that particular sector. Ah, then I check it. So I said, okay, let's consider the first, uh, a single particle excitation in H minus. And I realized that no, I'm in the wrong sector. Uh, the, the eigenvalue of pi z is not equal to is not equal to minus one, but it's equal to plus one. So there is a problem. I should reject this eigenstate. Yes, not yes. We are constructing all the eigenstates, and we say, okay, I we we will see that it's easy to to find the eigenstate of h plus h minus. But now we have to identify which one are the which are the correct one, the eigenstate of the easy model, because we have these two possibilities. And so in this case, we immediately see that if the ground state is in the sector with minus 1, then we see that the, the, the single particle excitation state is not. It should be in the other sector. So we have to diagonalize the matrix H plus to get that excitation, not H minus. From H minus, we can extract all the excitation with an even number of fermions. Because when you have an even number of B here, this operator commute with them because it, a, it takes a minus sign every time, so minus one to the to the twenty is equal to one. The two chain. Simply that. Okay. Uh, I, uh, because, uh, this this is not complicated. Uh, it's just a problem of uh, understanding one another. Uh, so. That's, I want, probably a graphical, graphical representation is better. So we have all the eigenstate of H. Some eigenstate of H are eigenstates of, okay, this is H. This is H plus, H minus, for example, and this is H plus. Okay. Some of these eigenstates are the same as H minus, others are the same of H plus. But 
this doesn't mean that these are all the all the eigenstate of H piles. You can have other eigenstate. For example, this one, this one, this one, this one. The same here. You can have this eigenstate, this eigenstate, this eigenstate, this eigenstate. H plus. When I compute the spectrum of H minus or H plus, I compute all this eigenstate. But then I should understand whether it is the correct one. Is the, there is a corresponding eigenstate of this in model. I have to ignore all these eigenstates because they are in the wrong sector. And this is what we did. We checked that if the ground state is here, the first excited state is not there, the single particle excited state. So we have to excite two, particle, two, two particles in order to be to be to remain in the same set. Is it clear now with the graphical representation? Okay. From from which you infer, from, from what you infer this? For each eigenstate of each eigenstate of H has a definite definite value of of pi z. Okay. So you have either one or the other. Uh, here I'm alternating them. This is not true in general. So they can also be well. Uh, you can have more uh, states uh, condensed that you have to neglect and whatever. I just well, it's just a draw. So don't, don't take it uh, seriously. Okay. So, so the same for so uh, how can you then? Okay, we know that the uh, uh, the the single particle excitation of, of H minus is not in the in the in the spectrum of the easing. So this means that we have to diagonalize H plus again. We diagonalize H plus, and then we have to check what is the eigen what is the eigenvalue of pi z. And now should be equal to plus one, and then we select all the all the second state. Now you can do this kind of calculation, whatever. What do you find? Now I'm telling you the result of this. The result is that when you are interested in the in the ground state, let's consider just the ground state of the model. For any finite value of n, of capital N, independently of h, the first excitation, the the, the ground state is always H minus and pi z equal to minus one, okay, independent of h. The ground state is always there. What about so the uh, the excited state of the model? This depends on the value of h. So if we if we now consider our phase diagram, this is h. This is h equal one. This is zero. So we have that the ground state here is, is in, uh, in the sector minus 1. And then what we find is that the first excited state, there is a gap here, general. And the first excited state is, uh, I think, it should be, I think is in the sector plus, generally. And there is a gap. Now, if you consider this case, a, the case H is more than one, you find that the, the, the ground state is still the sector minus, but the, there is a small, very small gap between the, the ground state and the first excited state, which is now in the other sector. And this gap scales exponentially. It's exponentially small in the, in the, system, in the system size. So these two eigenvalues become degenerate, these two, these two eigenstates becomes degenerate in the in the in the thermodynamic limit. Okay? In particular we know that this gap is equal to zero when h equal to zero because the two states are really degenerate. We we checked yesterday that we have the spin either are in the x direction or in the opposite direction. So in that case the gap is zero. Yeah. In the in general case for h in uh, zero one, uh, larger than zero, you find that they, they are close, very close by another in the finance chain, the finance system. But when you take the thermodynamic limit, that becomes degenerate. And then here there is a gap. Okay, this is the situation, the qualitative, uh, uh, the, the qualitative uh, properties of the spectrum, of the low energy spectrum. 
about the ground state of the model. <clears throat> we shouldn't be so surprised about this because we know that here there should be a phase, a ferromagnetic phase. Hmm? So in the thermodynamic limit, there is a symmetry which is broken. So this means there should be some degeneracy in the, uh, in the ground state. <laughs> Notice that this, this degeneracy exists only in the thermodynamic limit. And if the symmetry is broken, only in the thermodynamic limit. If you diagonalize the, the model for a finite chain, you use your mathematics or whatever, the mathematical, for example, to obtain the, the energy, you find that there is just one ground state. But this doesn't mean that that, the, that is the correct ground state in the thermodynamic limit. Okay. And in particular, I can tell you that uh, as yesterday, we, we talked about uh, which is the correct ground state to consider. No? And so we, we said that uh, you cannot pick any linear combination of the states in x plus and x minus. But there are particular combinations, which is just x, uh, the, the, the spins in a given in uh, x direction or opposite direction. You have the same here. You cannot consider any linear combination of these two. The correct linear combination is actually the superposition like this. is plus, plus or minus, minus divided by square root of 2. These are the physical ground state. The physical ground state is not in the particular sector. It mixes the two sectors. Okay. And this is a, a com very com an important complication when you compute correlation functions. Because everything is simple when you remain in the same sector, but when you uh, when you have to consider the presence of two sectors, it makes the calculation more complicated. But anyway, so is it clear the, the, the picture? Hmm? More or less? This is just a description of, uh, of the results that you will find uh, computing the expectation value of pi z and all that. Okay, but uh, we, we were talking about how to solve this, uh, this equation. I, yes, I give you five minutes and then we. She, uh, she made me note that uh, uh, there is a, I said something wrong, thanks, because we, yesterday we, uh, we computed the ground state in the limit h equals to infinity, you know, and we had that uh, all the spins are aligned along z. Now if you apply pi z to the state, you find plus. I said, uh, per plus the, the state with all spin up, right? Because sigma z applied to up uh, is equal to up. So I was wrong when I, when I told you that the ground state is in the sector minus, is in the sector plus. Sorry, my mistake, your problem with notation, notational problem. Okay? Uh, when you apply pi z to, uh, to, to all spin up, you find all spin up with a plus sign. So this means that the, the state with all spin up is in the sector uh, with pi z is equal to 1. We already know that this state is the ground state when h goes to infinity. So this, uh, this means that uh, it I was wrong saying that the ground state is in the sector h minus, that the h was equivalent to h minus in the ground state. It's the opposite. I said something wrong here. You have a plus. I repeat, I was wrong when I said that the ground state is always in the sector uh, represented by H minus. Is in the sector H minus, of uh, H plus. Okay. Thanks again. Okay, so
Okay, so so we still have to to solve this problem, uh, like in the uh, in the harmonic chain. But okay, what I so what uh, should we compute? We should compute the commutator between h plus minus, which is written like one over four, some ln of a l h calligraphic h l n a n and some linear combination of the major fermions. Now you are probably tired and I, if you want I give you the result, I tell you. Uh, well, you the idea you you know you have to commute these operators, then you find when you anti commute A N A J you will find delta J N and so on. It's very simple. I'm not doing it because I guess you are tired. But the, the idea is that if you write this using matrix notation, let's introduce the matrix notation because everything is easier. So if we uh, introduce this vector of A, of the major fermions, A1, A2n, okay. Again, then uh, this can be seen as a matrix. So you can uh, rewrite this as 1 over 4. Then you have some the vector A. Scalar product this matrix H plus minus vector A. This is just this term. And you can reinterpret this as B K vector A for given K. Okay. If you do this, what do you find when you consider the commutator? So I tell you that if you have the commutator of a generic form of this kind, A, A, A is a matrix, M, let's call it a matrix M. And here you have a vector A, scalar A. You find a very nice result that this is equal to, this is equal to MV, vector, uh, scalar product A. So you just have to apply the matrix M to the back, which is very similar to what we found, exactly the same what we found in the in the harmonic oscillator. And this you can prove very easily by anti-commutation, by anti-commuting this A with the other A. And then you will find when you commute this with this, you, you fix the index, the column index of M, and then and so on. And then this is what you find, just algebra. So uh, why why this is so why this is so nice? Because we wanted to solve this problem, and now this problem is equivalent to again to compute the eigenvalue, the eigenvectors of this matrix of the matrix H plus minus. So in other words, let's exact this equation. This equation here is equivalent to to find h, to, to solve the problem h plus minus, <coughs> applied to the vector which is called b, k, solve this problem equal epsilon k, b k. I'm saying, okay, that the, here when you write h plus minus in terms of the major fermion, no? you can uh, just request from an, you, you, can, you can reinterpret this as a scalar product between a vector of a and another vector which is given by h plus minus. And here I'm saying that for a generic, for a generic anti-symmetric matrix, You have this relation. Notice indeed that the, our h plus minus are anti-symmetric. And why you can always choose anti-symmetric matrices? Because the Majorana fermions anti-commute 
So the symmetric part of this matrix is don't uh, don't play any role. So you can you are always free to, to choose to put anti-symmetric matrices here. No? And indeed, okay, this theorem holds for anti-symmetric anti matrices. So for any anti-symmetric matrix, you have that the commutator between this quadratic form and the linear combination of the of the Majorana fermions can be written just as the matrix applied to the vector corresponding to a linear combination, scalar the vector of so the other linear combination. You can really, maybe, uh, well, you can show during the tutorial something I've been simple to show. So we have this, and we have to find the, the eigenvalue or the eigenvector of these matrices, which are this one. This is not, uh, this is not so difficult because, yeah, like we guessed the solution for the harmonic oscillator, uh, we can do the same here. And the idea is that to, uh, to again consider phases hmm? now as a solution. Uh, but now we, we must take into account that the metric is bo block circular. So you, uh, this means that uh, we have to treat we we will okay we will just uh, we will uh, uh, we will seek for a solution of the form of the following form for the vector b k is equal to okay b k two l minus one plus j is equal to e to the i l <clears throat> now l k plus minus and then it's a uh, uh, okay, uh, this is correct I would say uh, this times some vector b-dimensional vector v v j okay so I'm saying that uh, I'm uh, I'm divided the I'm splitting the indices in pairs, okay, two by two. Yeah, you see, uh, indeed, I uh, dislabel the, the pair of the indices of the matrix, and then these other indexes for the elements inside the, the two, uh, the, 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 the pair, yeah. And then what I'm saying is that if I consider this index, just the index of the, of the pair, then I can use the symmetry of the Hamiltonian, uh, the symmetry of the matrix, which is periodic, and so I know that the solution is just going by a phase, the usual phase, which is the Fourier series. But okay, I must take into account that there is this, uh, uh, the degrees of freedom of the pair, the fact that now we, the, this is not a scalar, so here I should expect the, that uh, I have to multiply by some vector hmm, that I have to determine, which diagonalize the two by two part of the matrix. I'm just saying I have this matrix. I, I see this matrix as a block matrix, so these are two by two parts. We have seen that the blocks have the periodic periodicity or anti-periodicity, so this means that I can seek for solution where for each block you have a particular phase and so on. But now here we have to find which is the correct, the correct vector to uh, two dimensional vector. You are seeking a solution of this form because this solution has this form. So I say, you can convince yourself, or, but, but, um, or you can just uh, read uh, somewhere how to compute the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the block circular matrix. So, what do you. So, if we seek. Uh, if, we, uh, if we plug this, this expression in, this, in, the, in the equation for the eigenvalues, in this equation, what do we find? We, have the, we write h plus minus 1 over n sum over k plus or minus of e to the i l minus n k. Okay, let's call this is the k q, otherwise, the q plus minus. Then you have the this 2 by 2 matrix, we call e of q plus minus index j j prime. And then I, I have to apply this to this particular vector. So I have here I, I, N, K, 
plus minus, and I have the small vector Vj. So this is this, the first part. This is this. Yeah. And this should be, yeah. In the exponent here, yeah, is written this, and with this one. But now I just change the name instead of using k, I'm using q because then I have k on the other, the other side. Okay. 1 over n, sum over q plus minus of this, hmm? jj prime, and then I'm applying to these vectors. What happens when you apply this to this vector? And you have to sum over n because it's a multiplication matrix time vector. So sum over n. Okay. Sum over n. When we sum over n, now we have the sum over n of e to the i. Let's just consider the sum over n. We have sum over n of e to the minus i n q plus minus, well, plus minus, sorry, q plus minus. You have this, no? Right? Now you remember that q plus minus are given by 2 pi, no? Uh, 2 pi j over capital N. So, as a matter of fact, the, you, you, you find that independently of, independently of plus and minus, the sum is just equal to the delta of q plus minus k plus minus times n. I repeat, so e to the i, when we define k plus minus, we added the, the, they were defined by the condition e to the i, uh, it was q plus minus is equal to 2, q, q plus is equal to 2, uh, 2 pi as this form, 2 pi j over capital N, instead q minus as the form 2 pi j plus 1 half over capital N. These were the two possibilities, no? the two sectors, the two quantization. Now, independent of the quantization, because there is a minus sign here, you simplify the one half. So in any case, you have the V, when you sum all the phases, sum over N, this expression, you find the Kronecker delta. So the two Q plus is equal to K plus, and Q minus is equal to K minus. So we, for this reason, we, we first sum over N, this expression, and what do we find when it's sum over n? So we find we are computing h plus minus b, the element l, and this is equal to 1 over n, simplifies with this n, and q plus minus equal to k plus minus, so it's equal to e to the i l k plus minus times e k plus minus applied to the vector b k plus minus, and here there is an index l, okay, this is 2l minus 1 plus plus j prime, say, and here we have j prime j, then we have the vector v j, and there is a sum over j. <coughs> well, I mean, I, I'm just writing this expression. So this, okay, which I, uh, which is nothing but this thing here, Okay, now it's equal to, we sum over n, so this gives this constraint, uh, it, it tells us that q plus minus is equal to k plus minus, I'm using this here, and so I, I end up with i l k plus minus, then there is this matrix, two by two matrix, multiplied by the vector, Vj. Oh, because of k, um, b, you are confused because there is j prime there, and there is a sum over j prime here, okay. Is 
is what I find, and I want to impose that this is equal to epsilon k bk, because so this should be equal to epsilon k, and bk was e to the i l k plus minus, and uh, uh, a plus minus, and then there was v vj. This is what we are imposing, what we are trying to solve. Now you see that this term simplifies, so this means that our answer was correct. Otherwise, uh, uh, we, we would have added some dependence on L here. So this means that the, in the end, what we have to solve is a negative value problem for this two by two matrix here. So we have to solve E apply E, e of k times v should be equal, which is a v of k, clearly. Okay. V of k should be equal to epsilon of k times V of k. Okay, now I, I know that it's, uh, it's late and it's confusing, but what I mean is that we started with a, a very complex problem because a many body system with, uh, and if you count the degrees of freedom, you have two to the capital N degrees of freedom, which is a lot. Okay, then somehow using the algebra of the Majorana fermions, we were able to reduce this problem to a problem of uh, uh, finding the eigenvalues of a matrix which had two capital N times two capital N matrix. So we reduced the, 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 uh, the, the complexity of the problem exponentially, okay? from two to the N to N. Now here, using the properties of our matrix, the fact that it's periodic or anti-periodic, we were able to reduce the problem to find the eigenvalues of a two by two matrix. Okay, so this is the magic of the solution of, uh, uh, of the easy model. If you start with an extremely complex problem and then you finally manage to reduce everything to a two by two problem. Okay. You can, you have the matrix, you can compute the eigenvalues. Of this, do it. Okay, no, no, now, but uh, <laughs> okay. The again, Mars the again back. Then next time uh, we'll tomorrow. Yeah, we'll finish this, and then we will start uh, talking about dynamics. And um, mm. okay, uh, Obo, don't be, don't be scared about all this part. You, you don't need. To, to be able to do all the steps of the diagonalization, just to, to know how to do it, okay? And just to understand the meaning of the, the fermions, so uh, how to construct the space, and that is important. I hope that that, uh, that you can understand that, the, the structure, okay, of the problem. Then, okay, the details are just details, technical details, so if you, well, uh, you maybe you need more time, you have to do all the, all the, Step, you know the passages, and then uh, in few in a few weeks uh, you uh, you will realize that this is simple. But yeah, I can understand it now. It's, uh,